All right, I'm going to walk through the assignment for George versus George. The way that you can do this activity is by using this graphic organizer. And then if we click, it will show us the link of the portraits that we're going from. Explore the Rule of Tranya and the Brawling Harvard Yard Galleries in the Museum of the American Revolution's virtual tour. So as I go to the Museum of American Revolution, Museum of American Revolution, I'm going to look through, click enter, and I'm going through Rule of Britannia. And as I look through, I can click on some of the items, zoom in, I can move around by clicking my mouse and dragging it through, and I found the large painting. And as I look at the large painting, I can opposite pinch and zoom in on parts of King George the third in his room to look at what's going on inside of this painting. And as we go through, we'll be comparing this painting to a painting of George Washington inside of this gallery, a brawl in Harvard Yard. So I'm gonna look through here. That does look like quite the brawl. Tells me on this image too, who's depicted, what's going on, who are our characters. George Washington, and there's George. What I'm looking for is painting, found him. So I'll click on the painting, same thing, zoom in and out, I can check out George Washington. As I look through those two galleries and look for the largest frame portrait, now I'm going to try and identify what's happening inside of these two posters. I'm gonna use the space below to record three or four observations. So as I'm doing that, I'll be clicking inside of these boxes, making my three observations that I see to help me figure out who these characters are. Question one, what similarities and differences do you notice between the two portraits? What do you think each artist meant to say about the portrait and the people portrayed? What do I see to make them think that in a change? Three complete sentences. So as I look through, the portrait. I'm going to be thinking back to art class, examining what types of items are inside of a poster, what clues the artist gives us about these individuals. And I'll be putting my answer here. Question two, who is featured on each of the portraits? What details in the portraits provide clues to the identity of the person that is being painted? So I'll look for clues such as clothing, items, and objects inside each of these. In our King poster, we have a lot of objects and items to signify some different things going on there. Question three, after reading the primary source cards, how are their lives similar and different from each other, especially before the Revolutionary War? And those primary source cards are on the back. They're right here. They're on the back of our poster. And if I click my link up top, right there, it's on the back side of that. Here's my primary source. So I'd go through, I'd read these primary sources, and I'd compare and contrast. And for question four, question four asks, what surprises or new details are there for me as I went through the primary source cards? Did I learn anything? What did I learn? How do I see these two characters? So those are the instructions for the assignment. And now I'm going to go through and I'm going to read the primary source cards. And this one is about King George III. This painting took four years to create. King George III was only 22 years old when he became the ruler of Great Britain. Born to Frederick, the Prince of Wales, and Augusta of Saxe Gotha in 1738, he never actually saw his father reign as king. Frederick died in 1751, and his own father, George II, was still on the throne. George, so what that means is like King Frederick's dad. So King George III, his grandpa was king when his dad passed away. So it skipped his dad. When George III became king, it was his grandfather's name he carried on. Interestingly, he was the first monarch, and a monarch is a king, 
a first monarch in his line to be born in Britain and speak English as his first language. He came from the House of Hanover, a family from the German royal family. George was born and educated in London. He spoke and wrote in both English and German. He studied science, math, geography, political science, language, and the arts. This was impressive for a child that few had thought would survive infancy. George had been born two months premature. He would continue to hold several of these interests into adulthood, collecting books and art. He even had his own astronomical observatory. A keen interest in agriculture led to the nickname, sometimes positively, sometimes negatively, as Farmer George. A year after taking the throne, George married Charlotte of mecklenburg Streitz. And before the day of the wedding, they had never met, but they went on to have a notably happy marriage and had 15 children together, 13 of whom survived into adulthood. As a ruler, King George III began his reign relatively well-liked across his empire. However, frustration with the costly seven-year war, which had begun during his grandfather's reign, created trouble in both England and abroad. Though he was king, he served in a constitutional monarchy, meaning he shared power with the British Parliament. Decisions during this war and afterwards to repair and strengthen the empire was the result of constant negotiations, compromises, and changing alliances, all of which shaped the conflict with the American colonies that followed. By the time the Revolutionary War ended in 1738, King George had been dealing with these challenges and frustrations for 23 years, just over half of his life. He was still only 45 years old. A little bit of a did you know that Hanover, where his family was from, and Saxgotha and mecklenburg streisitz are principalities in what is now known as Germany. When the Revolutionary War began, King George hired soldiers from Brunswick and other Brunswick and other principalities, including Hesse Castle, Hesse Hanau, Ansbach, Bayreuth, to supplement the British troops. My my German lessons back in high school are really helping me out. This next one's going to be about George Washington. And this painting was done in 1776. George Washington was born on February 22nd, 1732 in Westmoreland County, Virginia, to Mary Ball and Augustine Washington. The elder Washington was a wealthy planter who owned a tobacco plantation and also served as a local justice of the peace. George Washington was the pair's first child, but because his father had been previously married, Washington had several older siblings, including two half brothers. His parents would go on to have five more additional children. Washington's father died when he was only 11 years old. He left most of his property to his older sons, including the property that would become Mount Vernon, but left Washington a farm and 10 enslaved people. Because of his father's death, Washington was not able to receive a strong formal education. His two older brothers had been schooled in England but he was taught basics of reading, writing, math, and he used observation, reading, and social relationships to teach himself upper class manners. His first job, which he took at the age of 17, was a surveyor measuring land and boundaries for property holders in Virginia. He continued this line of work professionally for three years and continued to do it for his own lands throughout his life. Washington's next career was in the military, perhaps inspired by his older half-brother Lawrence, who was an officer in a British re infantry regiment in Virginia when he died of tubercular tuber tuberculosis. That's a hard word, tuberculosis, a cold, in 1752. That same year, Washington began trading and drilling, and by 1753 was involved in expeditions to defend British colonial territory in Virginia against the French, ultimately resulting in his participation during the French and Indian War as the only officer in the British forces who came from the American colonies. The French and Indian War saw Washington experience both defeats and successes. While it did not lead to a career with the British military as he hoped, 
Washington served as a representative for his country in Virginia's governing body for seven years. He balanced life both actively running his farm and business ventures, including managing both enslaved and paid laborers, engaging in leisure activities like fox hunting, attending dances and parties, fishing, and going to the theater. He also met and married the wealthy widow Martha Dandridge Custis and began raising her two young children from her first marriage. When the conflict with Britain began, Washington, who was in his 30s, was a prominent landowner, respected war veteran, local politician, husband, and father. He was very ambitious, and he even showed up at the Second Continental Congress wearing his military uniform, hoping to be selected to command the newly formed Continental Army. He was successful. By the end of the Revolutionary War, he was 51 years old and wanted nothing more than to return to his land and family in Virginia. Instead, a new adventure awaited him. Uh, did you know? Did you know that before becoming a surveyor, where's my mouse? There we go, I gotta move that. Before becoming a surveyor, Washington had actually wanted to join the British Royal Navy, but his mother wouldn't let him. That's the reading that you would use to get through on question three. And then question four here talks about what you learned. What was surprising to you? Did you see them in a new way? Why?